everybody and welcome to 3D HP. My name is Jerry and we're going to start on the Tic Tac belt printer today. I've got, I believe, all the parts printed. I've got quite a few parts here. I went through probably, I don't know, three, four or five rolls of filament. So, we've got a couple rolls of blue there. I have like three rolls of blue. And I ordered some black to do the trays. And then uh, I didn't think I'd have enough black left over. So the drawer and the drawer holder over there on the Hypercube I done in... Uh, PLA plus but the first thing we need to do is I need to take my Ender 3 apart I've already removed the power supply on Ender, Ender 3 Pro I've got to remove the gantry the bed and a bunch of parts so we'll get that going here right now and we'll start putting stuff together and show you where we're at but we got lots of goodies here and lots of work to do and uh, it's gonna take a minute but here we go Okay, I had to go sit down for a little bit and work on these. Took a very long time to get all those in. Maybe, I don't know, 20 minutes to a half hour. I've done three or four of them here. Got them prepped and ready to go. Got all the T-nets put on. Now it's just a matter of turning them all straight when you slide them into the extrusion. Then as you tighten them, they'll spin sideways and lock into the extrusion. And I'm looking at a picture on my monitor way over there on an exploded view of this printer, which I'll have here on the screen, and to see which way this goes together. So, and this is the front. This is the back. And I may not have put them all in, but I think I have all of them. Okay, I've got to go ahead and tap all four of these holes here. They're drilled but not tapped. So, with those four exposed, just went and picked up a bit. Three and one oil on it. Okay, I've got uh, holes here that are pre-tapped and I've got holes drilled in the top but I don't have any bolts anywhere that will fit them and I have many bolts and nothing will fit those. Um, the M5s just uh, spin, M6s won't fit so I don't know. But when once this is clamped up it doesn't really matter. I mean if you put the bolts in then you don't need the big monstrosity to go over the top of it with a zillion uh, T-nuts. This is kind of overkill. So typically the four bolts would have been adequate. You, know, you wouldn't have to do any more to it. But like I said, I don't have to fit it, so I'll go ahead and keep moving forward here. Got to get all these T-nuts and everything to line up so I can uh, put it together. So many of them. Give it a little wiggle wiggle here and there and you have to go around and loosen them up. Get them to slide together.
And if you can't get them all to slide together, you have to take them apart, slide the T-nut down the channel, try to line it up there, put the bolt in after the fact. And there's a couple different options here. Alrighty, basically here's where I'm at. Okay, when I was putting these corners on, because I put all the bolts in, I had all the hammer nuts in there, the T-nuts slid together at once. You gotta kind of finagle it to get to put together. And then I wound up cracking it right across here. Now, as you can see, when I printed this, the layer lines run this way. We have a hole here, a hole here. So when I snug this down, it cracked it all the way across. I need to reprint this piece. And uh, like I said before, that you see in the video there, that this bracket, um, there's four, this, extrusion they sent out to me had two holes in it this extrusion here was pre-tapped but i don't have any bolts and i have many many bolts in my hobby room here i couldn't find nothing to fit it but the back up this you know and then once you put this on you tighten it down it's good to go over here i will simply take the t-nut slide it in the channel turn this up on end and then i'll put the bolt in i can snug that up so whenever you have trouble if you don't want to put all these in you can slide them in the channel manually one at a time like my friend Liam did and then put the bolt in and then the next T-nut. I went ahead and put them all together and I kind of jiggled it around for a while to get the T-nuts to turn straight with the channel and put the corner on. That does work, it just takes, you know, takes a little bit of time. So uh, I just need to go around, snug everything up, line it up a little bit so I'm perfectly flat on top and uh, this part is pretty much put together and I'll be, uh, that's gonna be pretty much it for this, vid this video. I've got a lot of it done. As you can see, i got a long way to go. But please stay tuned for my next video, and uh, we'll go over some more stuff. So, yeah, I'm very happy with it at this point. And the TIG Attack belt printer, which is a conversion from an Ender 3 Pro. Now, you can use a standard Ender 3, or you can use an Ender 3 Pro. I chose to go with the Pro because I had a few of them laying around. And as you can see here, I've got many parts to go. I've got the drawer assembly done right here. That's done in white. I'm probably going to prime that and paint it. And then here's where the power supply is going to go and the control board. And one thing about that is that the power supply is too wide by about 10 millimeters to fit down in here. So more than likely, I'm going to have to take a Dremel and have to cut out this side where the two attach. That way my power supply will fit. There's a roller system. I've got many, many more parts to go and a few more videos to get all this done. But... You know, I just wanted to bring you guys along on my journey on this uh, really cool little belt printer that, you, that you'll be able to print soon yourself with uh, your Ender 3. So I hope you stay tuned and check it all out.